And the problem is that we confuse, we confuse information for wisdom. We confuse, wow, this is infrared or ultraviolet, or, or we drop a little bit of quantum mechanics. You know, if I hear another quantum mechanical explanation about the nature of life, I'm going to get sick. It's like the fact that we can articulate. I, rem- I was in the Amazon, in the Andes one time with the shamans, and I worked for many years with the shamans, and I was telling this woman medicine woman, about chaos theory. Chaos theory is that butterfly that flapped its wings in Beijing and caused a tropical storm in the Caribbean. And when I finish, she says, okay, show me. I go, what do you mean show you? This is quantum physics. She says, no, show me. And I had a brand new PhD. And she goes, come on, flap your little doctor wings and heal somebody in India. And I go, I can't do that. She says, I can. Because it's not confusing information for wisdom. Information is knowing water is H2O. Wisdom is being able to make it rain. Information is having a diagnosis. Wisdom is being able to create health. And today we're an information society when we need to become a wisdom society and we're going through that rite of passage of initiation today and that's why the medicine plants have to are very powerful and they have to be used within the context of a sacred journey not just a waking up journey but a real sacred journey with a sacred map why do you think we're having a uh, psychedelic renaissance especially with uh, mushrooms and psilocybin I don't think we're having a renaissance I think it's always been there I mean it's just come out from underground (laughs) So I was many years ago, I was in a conference in in Basel in Switzerland with Albert Hoffman. Albert Hoffman was the one who discovered LSD, right? Yeah, Albert Hoffman was the discoverer of LSD and he, he would microdose every Sunday, 10 micrograms of LSD, till he died at 102. So the um and we had a chance to ask him, so so Albert, to me it was Dr. Hoffman, you know, so I was, I was young. And um, he says, Why, what's, the, what's the importance of this medication? Nobody carries it in their pharmacy. It's against the law in many places. And he says, it's got to wait its time. And when its time comes, it's going to be the ticket, the passage into the 21st century. Wow. Well, so I think that this is now the Renaissance and it's happening is getting legitimized in therapeutic context. And that's giving it a legitimacy to it. And it's, but there's always the explorers. See, that's the mainstream now is catching up. But that that outer edge of the bubble of the explorers, like you and I and many people watching this, this, um, this summit, it's going to add a level of legitimacy and ideally some guidelines of how we can use this as a real rite of passage into the real 21st century, into that new human that the indigenous prophecies say is being born in the planet today. Incredible. So how did you become a shaman? Well, you know, I took notes and recorded and made documentaries and did not docu, you know, filmed videos, super eight back then <clears throat> for a number of years. And, and um, and I would record into my recorder. And then one day I was so t- tired of documenting because that's objective science. And shamanism is participatory. I threw all my notes and my recorder into the fire, including my tape recorder. I got so ang- so pissed off. The next morning I see the shaman that I was working with in the Amazon. He has the guts of my tape recorder hanging around his neck little yellow diodes and transistors. And, and he, a patient would come to see him and he would put it to his ear and he'd say, ah, you know, the problem that you have is you have your, your blood sugar is very high and you have missed this rite of passage with your daughter and you've got to come into a relationship with the forces of nature 
And the next one would come and he would listen to them. And I go to him, I said, what are you doing? He said, I've seen, he said to me, I've seen this thing talking to you for the last three months. It's talking to me now. <laughs> so, of course, he didn't need, he, he has such an active communion with nature. He could track the energy field. He could tell you who your grandmother had slept with by looking at your energy field or what illness was ready to express itself in your body. And he could clear that from the energy blueprint so it didn't have to get somatized. It didn't have to get processed through the body. And, um, and that's when I began to study. And um, his wife came and said to me, and she was a medicine woman also. He said, Alberto, we have to heal you first. I said, but I'm 28 years old. I'm healthy. He said, no, we have to heal your, your ignorance. Because you think that we're primitive. Because you are an academic and you are, you're a doctor. You're, you think we're primitive. You're the primitive one. You're the really, you're ignorant. So I said, heal me. <laughs> and I'm still working on becoming less ignorant. 